Hey, Ron here, and uh, I have a very special package, as always, from Medieval Shop. Uh, Y'all, Tim has sent us some stuff, uh, really nice stuff at that. Uh, but what I did first of all is I opened it up, and there was clothing in the package, and I was impressed with what I found. Uh, he sent a Lyripipe hat. The Lyripipe hat is from the 15th, uh, 14th, 15th century. Uh, and they were worn in a number of different ways. I'm just wearing it in one of the many ways you'll see depictions of it. Sometimes the piece is hanging down the back. Uh, a lot of you might have seen them in movies and uh, plays and so on. Uh, but I thought it'd be really well, uh, nice to wear with the uh, Viking tunic. He sent me a brown Viking tunic. I don't know if y'all can see this very well. But a uh, very beautiful tunic and a nice black belt. Uh, it's a one-inch belt. Very period for the Viking era. Uh, other than uh, a lot of times they normally didn't have a D-ring. A lot of reenactors love D-rings nowadays, not that they didn't have them. Uh, a lot of times they would have an actual buckle, but you could put a buckle on here if you wanted to. It's a very nice strip of leather, black, and I like it just the way it is. It works great with this. Beautiful setup. Zero pipe hat, brown Viking tunic, and this is a long tunic. Uh, it comes down to my, my shin, so very, very nice. Very, very common historically to have a long or short tunic. Uh, but let's get into the box. Like I said, I've already opened the box to make sure everything was able to get apart because he's been packing it very, very well lately where I pretty much have to cut off all our kinds of uh, bubble wrap that the uh, Viking kids love to pop and all their kinds of stuff like that. So this was so well packed, it took me a while to get it set up. So let's pull something out. Uh, oh, it also sent some very nice magnets. These magnets, uh, little cute shield magnets, uh, I sent quite a handful of them. Uh, if you send some of the order, they're really nice on the fridge. Uh, Looks like a little uh, uh, center boss shield. I don't know, with an umbo. Uh, let's see what we got first. Aha! This is an axe I've been interested in. Uh, it's based on the Austral find, where they found an axe that looked like this. Uh, Austral Veniki, I think is what it was. Uh, but this one looks very much, if you look at it, like a tool axe. A lot of people will say a tool axe. But after our testing of uh, the Northgarod find that we have, the one of Bogax on the channel, we've actually made a replica of so we can test it on steel and not damage it. Uh, it looks very much alike. It looks so similar to the uh, axe, the Northgarod axe, uh, the artifact I have on hand here, that I will be shipping back soon, that it's beautiful and I think it will perform very similar. Uh, if y'all would like to see this uh, axe Ooh. first tested in the videos, let me know. Uh, I can test it on this handle here. Uh, I can't even make it uh, go a little, because a lot of times, once we little shop, uh, the way they mount them, they give you lots of leeway so it doesn't come off as they're slipped off on the bottom. I can get a little closer to the top so it has a little slightly longer handle, but I might even mount it on a longer handle. It's a nice oval handle too with that, and test it on a uh, helm like we did with the uh, replica of the bog axe made by Adrian Watson. Uh, and a good shout out out there, happy birthday, Adrian Watson. I know this is a little uh, late. Uh, he's the one who made all of our pelum. Uh, and that replica for us. Excellent blacksmith. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you want to see this axe tested first, let me know. Put some on that. Okay, let's see what else we have in the box. Ooh. Everyone knows how I love spears. Uh, let's see which spear he sent me. All right, uh, I believe this is the Trend, uh, Trendville or the uh, Trindival uh, spearhead design. It's beautiful, it has the little ball here. Uh, the design of the spear, what I believe is for, is it was kind of like having the crux uh, uh, or the uh, uh, crook spear or the wing spear, where you could hook stuff and it kept it from going too deep. Well, the idea of this one, you could actually hook stuff with it and use it just as if you were using the other one because it's not a leaf-shaped spear. A lot of spears were more leaf-shaped in the time period. Uh, the uh, Scandinavians, the Viking culture, the raiders loved leaf shapes, but these were also uh, possible spearheads you could run into. And uh, it has a little ball on it. Maybe we can figure out if there was any advantage to having this ball and test it out. It seems like it's really good steel. Uh, I think it will do some tr extreme piercing, maybe test it against some actual steel plate or uh, some mail. If you want to see this first, the uh, uh, Trient Trientvold uh, find uh, replica, or it's close. Uh, let me know. It's a very nice, well-made spearhead. I'm impressed. I wish I would have had that uh, earlier for the uh, uh, samurai one. That would be excellent. 
Oh, let's see what we got in here. Ooh, looks like uh, it's the classic medieval sword from Medieval Shop. Uh, like I said, Caddy and I opened this up and uh, it was really, I mean, covered in uh, plastic bubble wrap and, and paper and tape. So it took a little bit of work to get it out, but she loved the balance of it once she got it out. I mean, it's like she found a prize or something. We have a classic wheel disc pummel, large disc or wheel. Uh, but it's also shaped in a taper type fashion, so I kind of like the way that is. And it has a nice balance to it, a nice weight. Uh, the only thing I say about it is, for me, it would be hand and a half. I mean, I could use it hand and a half or one-handed. With a big wheel disc pommel, it's not like you're going to lose it out of your hand. They kind of act a lot like the uh, uh, that larger wheel acts like a, a Viking Age uh, tea cozy pommel or something. kind of hooks it in the hand. So you've got a beautiful sword here. You could use it for blade fencing. Uh, you've got a nice wide quillion or cross guard, a very thin fuller. So this is quite heavy blade. I would say it feels much like a 13th century blade, uh, like a hand and a half style. I like the weight to it. Very much a war sword type thing. Can't wait to test that out. Let's see what else we got. Let's see if we have something even, even bigger and beefier and bigger lead up. Wow! Now this is something I've been waiting on for a while. He had mentioned he had an Irish version or Irish version of a Claymore, or Claymore. Uh, and that's what we have. Uh, basically, this is a large war sword uh, that would have been used by the Irish. Uh, some of the Scottish, where they mixed up, and the uh, Norse tribes made such blades. And this one would be an Irish version. You've got the Irish classic ring uh, pummel on the back classic ring pummel a nice oval handle a uh, nice handle I love this handle the way it feels you have excellent control behind it uh, it'll do whatever you want like a long sword uh, pretty much but it's extremely large sword this is an early style great sword or a two-handed sword I definitely wouldn't want to be using this one-handed it's very much like the claymore we tested in the other videos uh, but believe it or not, it feels a bit lighter. So we've got something kind of in between, but an extremely long blade. It has three fullers, but if you look closely, it actually has a little bit of a uh, fuller you kind of see in historical versions where this isn't flat. It's kind of kind of a fuller inside of the blade. This isn't just a flat edge here. This actually goes in, and then you've got the three fullers. So them accompanying each other, working together, with the taper it does have, a little bit of distal taper, it's very well balanced for a two-handed blade. Feels quite good. Right where your three fullers come in is about where the balance is. There is no ricasso on this one, but I love the quillion, the cross guard, the way it looks. Very excellent, elegant. Like they'd say, it's more simple than a claymore, but in, in some respects it is, and others it's not. I think it's going to perform very well. I think it'll give us the same kind of performance of the claymore, uh, and be a hair lighter, possibly. So uh, if you all want to see these videos, be sure and let me know which one you want to see first. Uh, I'm sure you're going to want to probably see this sword, just like we did with the glaive. Uh, Philip Brooks' glaive did extremely well. Be sure and check that video out. But of course, it performed like a glaive, uh, whereas a sword like this is going to have a lot of follow through and it's not, it's not going to want to slow down. So we might get even better cuts or we might do the two head thing again, possibly. That would be a lot of fun and uh, maybe some other stuff. Let me know down below. Uh, your old Tim wants to know if we want to get a pig carcass. Uh, he's saying he will fund that to test stuff like this blade on and maybe the new blades tested on an actual uh, carcass of a, a pig. Of course, of the pig afterwards, I will probably eat one. Of course, I will eat everything that's left. We're not going to waste anything. Uh, it should be a great video, so let me know if you all want to do that and which blade you want to see first. Do you want to see the axe first? The Austral, the Austral fine based axe is very similar to our... Uh, our uh, Axe from North Grunov, our artifact. Uh, you want to see the uh, Kringle uh, spearhead, which is unique because it's uh, not a uh, leaf shape and it's got the little ball. So it can also kind of hook, and this ball might have some advantages. I might try putting it on a two handed pole and see how that works. And uh, then we've got our uh, classic medieval sword, which you see in a lot of drawings historically, the big giant disc pommel you'll see come up in a lot of the old effigies, so on, uh, with a nice cross guard. And it's basically, you know, almost a hand and a half. It could be used that way if wanted. A uh, nice weight to it, 13th century style sword, kind of. 
or do you want to see the gallo glass style sword? This is an Irish or Irish version of a, uh, well, actually two-handed great sword. I should say hand and a half. I don't know what I'm saying. But this is truly a great sword if you look at the, uh, I could use it one-handed is what I'm saying here. Probably. Anyway, if you want to see that, be sure and vote down below. And as always, uh, thank you again, Medieval Shop and your old Tim. Uh, thanks for the wonderful clothing. We'll come back and do a little history on the clothing, possibly, like the uh, the actual uh, Lyra Pipe hat. And uh, as always, I bid you, if I can get this blade put up, it's extremely long, for our bell.